it took us a long time to choose the material for it. We recorded a lot of music, and then we kind of stepped back and, and tried to see what made the best uh, collection of music. And it was a lot of songs that uh, I think had a bit of a... Um, uh, they're like a very kind of relaxed, warm feeling to them. This band is a really interesting band. There's not so much of a, a roadmap for us. Uh, so we're always trying to learn something as we go. So every song we write and arrange and record is a, a learning process. Um, mostly because we have a great harpist in the band and there's no roadmap for how a harp should necessarily go in this music. We're not trying to use it like a classical instrument. We're not trying to use it like a gimmick or, a, or an embellishment. It's really trying, it's really integrated into the songs. So, sometimes it happens very naturally. Um, but it's always, it's always um, a process of exploration. There, like Brad said, there, there's no roadmap for me either. I have no idea uh, what a harp is supposed to sound like in in this music. It's just I I kind of go on instinct. Like we all we all arrange this music based on our our musical instinct. I guess for me, my my reference is an orchestra. In orchestras, you have textures coming in and out, instruments coming in and out, and and it's and uh, you you create these incredible waves of dynamics that way. And I, we all approach these songs in this band in that way as well. And that's how I try to approach playing the harp. And it's it's quite challenging because personally, I find most of the time when I hear the music. I don't feel like it's calling for a harp, you know, or it, that might just be, I think a lot of people, you know, you, you get so used to your own sound that you want to hear something different. So I'm always trying to find, find a way to play, play in, in such a way that adds something to the music. And that also is uh, surprising to, to me, that, that challenges me to find a new way to play. We brought in a great engineer um, who is responsible for a lot of the, the sonic texture in the record. Uh, his name is Ryan Freeland. He's worked with Bonnie Raitt, Ray LaMontagne, Salif Kayeta, a number of great musicians that we respect. And, and his sound is a very clear sounding instruments, everything in its place, but not too clean a nice layer of dust on everything, a nice feeling of space, and uh, really leaning towards a live, making a live sound off the floor sound as good as it possibly can. Um, so we, we sort of maintain that philosophy that uh, making a, a live, playing as live as possible was gonna be our, our best asset. Uh, there's uh, many guests in Montreal. There's a great community of musicians and uh, we live in a neighborhood where we have a recording studio, so a lot of the time we'd have friends just come down to the studio and play on something, and you know some of it would stick and some of it wouldn't. Um, and we, so we had Joe Grass, who's a great pedal steel player, and we had some great horn players, and we had um, Miles Perkin and Mishka Stein and Richard Reed Perry um, from different Montreal bands come and play basses, and it was very. Uh, there wasn't a whole lot that was preset and written out a lot of the music was kind of created um, you know and, and these musicians kind of added their touch and a great uh, Ngoni player from Mali um, came also and played his name is Abusi Siku The main, main ones we used are our primary instruments, drums, guitar, harp, a uh, couple electric bass, uh, acoustic bass, pump organ, 
So those instruments are pretty much on every track. And then and then you just get into the fun the fun of it all. I I wouldn't be able to say uh, I wouldn't be able to say which instruments only because when you commence the recording and then you're deep in it, it's almost like you're in a dream or some kind of frenzy. Hopefully a very, you know, uh, lucid frenzy, but no less um, absorbed to the point where I know at, th at one point I think he was playing a toothbrush on a snare drum. I think there was a, a frog somewhere involved, uh, many bells. Um, Sarah played a number of string things from hammered dulcimer to her cardboardium bowed uh, mountain dulcimer to uh, you might have even played your comb on a track I don't know so it it gets very involved and and forget what you've done hopefully by the end that's the best way to do it I love the the chaos of recording uh, and you get so involved in it you come out the other side and you you know you've done something major but you don't exactly know how you got there and uh, how did you start music how did we start music um it started us <laughs> yeah yeah i def i definitely flipped around instruments a lot more than you guys did i i started on piano and then accordion a lot of choirs and guitar and i i finally settled on harp when i was 19 actually and now now i'm changing again <laughs> but it's it's kind of endless but i i don't know where music music starts really your your ears uh i think your ears just kind of gravitate towards sounds and i love that question by the way <laughs> um andrew probably i mean we started together out of you know just something to do just something to have fun with um, yeah and and having a having a brother to explore it with just sort of made it that much easier and fun to do you you know we guitar and drums we could we, we learned pretty quickly that we could play at most of our favorite songs, whether Chuck Berry songs or ACDC or old 50s oldies. It was um, it was very much a, became became a passion very quickly. I'm, I'm also extremely convinced that this music is for everybody, that this music could reach everybody. I just uh, would be surprised if it did, but I really hope it does. Okay, thank you very much.